There are seven things that you need to know to thrive financially in 2024. New Year's resolutions are right around the corner. Rather than making some unrealistic goal, working towards bite-sized financial milestones can help get your money and your finances in great shape. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you seven things that you need to know to take control of your finances and set yourself up for financial success in the new year. As always, feel free to skip around the timestamps to save time. Let's get into it. Number one, start an emergency fund. First and foremost, without a doubt, this year is the year that you either look to beef up or start your emergency fund. While this step isn't the most glamorous, this could be the most important thing that you do for the up and coming year. We never know what life is gonna have in store for us, so future you will thank current you for planning ahead and making sure that you're financially prepared for anything that life throws your way. It is typically recommended to have around three to six months worth of basic living expenses saved. This fund will cover things like any medical issues, being laid off, any car or housing issues, and any other potential mishaps that come your way. It's important to do this first because if something bad does happen, then you could end up in more financial trouble and head down the slippery slope into debt. If three to six months worth of living expenses sounds a little bit overwhelming, you could look to start with just saving $1,000 and then build from there. Also, if you do have debt, which we'll get to a little bit later, then I would recommend that you just start with building $1,000 and then look to pay down your debt before building your full emergency fund out. Having that small thousand dollar buffer in place will stop you from going further into debt. The best place to keep your emergency fund is in a high interest savings account because it typically earns a little bit more than a traditional savings account. This means you can then save your emergency fund faster and then focus your money on other goals. You want to make sure that the money that you have set aside for emergencies is not getting eroded by inflation, so that's why it's important that you store this in a high interest savings account. This will ensure that you're earning interest so that your money can work hard for you too. You work hard for your money, so it should also work hard for you. I have a whole video all about emergency funds if you'd like more of a deep dive into this topic, which I'll link it up over here for you. Number two, take control of your debt. Maybe you've spent a little bit too much over the holidays or maybe you've got some accumulating debt. This new year is the best time to tackle your debt. Debt can actually really weigh you down and impact your life. The sooner you can clear it, the more peaceful and free you will feel. My personal favorite method to clear debt is called the avalanche method, and this is the fastest and most efficient way to clear debt. With the avalanche method, what you do is focus on paying down the highest interest debt first while making minimum repayments on all the others. By paying off the highest interest debt first, you're tackling the fastest growing debt first. While you're focusing on paying down debt, avoid going into any further debt by cutting all unnecessary spending. Don't add to your credit card debt by making sure that you're using your cards responsibly. Don't put any purchases on them that you can't afford outright and pay in full straight away. To supercharge this step, something that you could look to do is have a look around your home and see if you can find items that you no longer need or use that you could sell for some extra money to pay down your debt. As mentioned in terms of paying down debt and saving an emergency fund, I recommend following Dave Ramsey's advice on this and saving that first little $1,000 emergency buffer and then focusing on tackling your debt. Having a little buffer in place can help stop you from going further into debt. Being debt free is a goal worth striving for. Number three, create an intentional spending plan. The idea of tackling your whole financial life can be difficult and also very overwhelming. Start by creating an intentional spending plan for the year ahead. This will give you a financial roadmap to follow. When setting this up, a good rule to follow is the 50-30-20 rule. 50% of your income will go towards your necessities, so think things like your rent or mortgage payments, utilities, groceries, and other necessities. 30% goes towards your wants, so think entertainment and dining out. All those good things that bring you joy. And finally, 20% goes towards your financial goals, so think investments, savings, building your emergency fund, paying down debt, and building a nest egg for future you. You can tailor these percentages to fit your lifestyle, but keep the essence of balancing needs, wants, and your financial future. Over time, the hope is that your needs and wants will decrease as your income grows and your salary grows with your career, and you'll be able to increase the 20% that you're putting away for future you. 
Don't be afraid to take it slow and remember to regularly review and adjust your spending plan as your life changes and your income and expenses change. If you'd like a free copy of my intentional spending plan, I'll link it up down below for you. It's completely free and it's easy to download and use. Number four is retirement contribution. In the same way that your spending plan takes care of today you, your retirement contributions take care of future you. One of the easiest things you can do to set yourself up for success in the future is to contribute as much as possible to your retirement account. Start by making sure that you're contributing enough to get your full employer match. This is free money. Here in New Zealand, if you have KiwiSaver set up, you may also be eligible for the government contribution, which is more free money. I have a video all about common KiwiSaver mistakes that New Zealanders are making, which I'll link up over here if you'd like to check it out. When it comes to retirement planning, the best thing you can do is start early and let the beauty of compounding work its magic. Number five is start investing. Investing is arguably the scariest part for anyone starting their financial journey. It can feel really daunting to try and figure out where to put your money and there's so much jargon which can make it confusing as well. This year, it's important that we take charge of our financial future. So take a look at your goals, your risk tolerance and pick investments that align with your needs. Take advantage of apps or platforms that offer you an affordable and easy way to start with small amounts of money. In New Zealand, a great way to get started is by using Sharesies, which I'm sure a lot of you may have heard of. You can start with as little as $1, but if you'd like to start with a free $5, I have a link down in the description that you can click and get a free $5 to start your investing journey today. If it's all sounding a little too daunting, then I recommend that you start with this great book called Girls That Invest by Simran Kaur. This book is based basically a beginner's bible where it walks you through how to get started, unpacks all the jargon and shows you how to grow a stock market portfolio like a pro. There's also a link to this book down in the description if you'd like to get yourself a copy. Remember, investing is for the long haul so patience is key. Start small, stay consistent and watch your investments grow over time. Number six is maximize your spending. If you are already going to spend money then you might as well get something back for it. Two of the easiest ways to do this are through cashback apps and also using rewards credit cards. Cashback programs are a great way to ensure you as an online shopper are getting something back for your spending. The beauty of cashback lies in its simplicity. You shop and you earn. It's like getting a little reward for being a smart shopper. If you use it responsibly, it shouldn't change your shopping or your spending habits. You buy what you need and as a bonus, you get a little something back. On top of that, you can look to double dip. Picking the right credit cards can make all the difference. Rather than picking any credit cards, take a look at your life and also your priorities. Make sure that you choose a card that aligns with what you value in life so that you can get those extra rewards on purchases that you are gonna make anyway. No matter which card you choose, it's important to make sure that you always pay this off in full each month, otherwise all rewards and all benefits are canceled out by the high interest that is charged. Last but not least, make a plan for the future. What does your financial life look like in a year, in five years time, in 10 years time? Something that I personally like to do at this time of the year is review my goals and my dreams and write them all down. I then look at how money can get me there and what I'm gonna need to do to get to where I want to go. Now is a great time to figure out what actionable steps you need to take to reach your goals. I hope these seven tips offer you a cheat code to financial freedom. It's all about making your money work smarter and harder while you get to kick up your feet earlier rather than later. It's about building a vision for your life and using money as a tool to help you get there. If you like this video, you might like to check out my other video about resetting for the new year, which is coming up next. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.